I was going to wear my dino inflatable costume, but I put it on last night and I was like, I can't teach in this. <laughs> I tried. I tried last night. It's not happening. Okay, here we go. All right. All right. Well, happy Halloween. You like my slippers? <laughs> my kids came to me. They're like, you have to wear your slippers. They can pick your outfit. But Anyone doing anything fun for today? I'm giving out lots of candy, I'm sure. I'm so excited to take my kids trick-or-treating. It's like my favorite thing to do because I have to check all their candy like a good parent, right? I want to make sure it's safe. So I'll eat half of it for them just to keep them safe. It's all for them, of course, right? Um, yeah. Oh, I was going to show you a uh, randomly just because you have no choice. Here's, there they are. So my kids dressed up. I think they look pretty cute, right? Uh, so my oh, hurts a little. Priorities. Let's turn it down so you can see my children. All right. So my uh, youngest is a sparkly dragon. <laughs> Right? I'm not sure. And then uh, a cat witch and an evil clown. Though she wasn't allowed to wear her blood soaked like tights to school. But like that was the, the line, I guess. No blood on your costumes. But they looked super cute. I had to take a picture. And you have to look at it, right? I'll just leave it up. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> Though I uh, was excited to share that with you. And uh, I have a couple of things. And then I, I did bring you lots of candy because it's Halloween and it's. I mean, it's early, but I plan to eat a lot of candy today. So I think we should just get it started. I have no problem with that. Uh, but we'll get into this today. We're going to do, I have like a couple of slides to introduce with this and then um, actually have you doing like a little group project. So it'll be nice to put on some uh, music and give you some candy while you're working on it. I think that'll be kind of fun. Uh, I used to show like parts of like Halloween movies, but it's it got harder and harder to justify why I was doing it. So it's not the most fun conversation for Halloween, but hopefully we can make the most of it. Uh, I want to share like two things before that, though. If you were uh, the exams, I did grade them all. So hopefully you saw your scores. Just um, as some context on the exam, the high score was uh, 99%. Mm -hmm. So Amazing. There were, I think, three people who got 99%. Amazing. Uh, the low score was a 61%. So a little bit of a range. The average was an 88. 88.6. So just shy of an A. And the average amount of time people took to take the test was 55 minutes, 13 seconds, right? So uh, it looks like you all had plenty of time. A lot of people did amazingly. There were a ton of A's, which I would hope to see given that you had your notes in your book and everything. So uh, hopefully you feel really good about that. I also graded the, um, the, the homework with the song lyrics. So everything should be all graded and up to date. So um, you can make sure you check that on, on Canvas if you wanted to get those scores. But uh, we move into, this is our, our last, like third of the class that we move into, uh, which just seems crazy. It went really, really quickly. But we'll look at uh, birth control and contraception and abortion in this unit. Then we go into pregnancy and birth. And then um, STIs, sexually transmitted infections. Uh, we'll look at varieties of sexual expression, power, and then selling sex. So those are our last topics. So we have a third of the semester left, one more exam, one more assignment. Uh, and again, if, if your scores have been good, keep doing the same thing. If you wish they were a little better, try and change things up again as we move into this last, last third of the class. Again, it feels like it's going so, it's gone so quickly. But, uh, any questions or anything about any of that before we jump into birth control methods? I don't know if that's a good Halloween topic or not, but you know, it feels, could be worse, right? It could be STIs for today. That seems like it'd be like punishing if we were talking about sexually transmitted infections on, on Halloween, but any questions, thoughts, anything? All right. So like I said, um, I have a few slides to kind of introduce this uh, and then a clip or two and a few things we'll talk about. And then I'm actually going to have um, all of you get into groups and do a little group project with some uh, common birth control methods. So we'll get to that 
and the candy and stuff uh, in a little bit here. But uh, let's introduce this contraception and birth control, right? which is the topic for this chapter. Uh, here we're talking about preventing pregnancy. Right? So birth control methods traditionally are used to prevent pregnancy, either by preventing ovulation from happening, so preventing the egg from being released, preventing fertilization from taking place, the egg and the sperm meeting up, or implantation, right? The egg implanting in the uterine wall. So we can approach birth control from a couple of different ways. Uh, and there are a lot of different methods, right, that, that people use, and we'll talk about that a little bit. And we really have a lot of evidence that we've been using some kind of birth control method since the beginning of recorded history. And it's kind of wild some of the things that we used to do. Um, ancient Greek civilizations used magic, superstition, and herbs to try and prevent pregnancy. So magical like rituals, um, the use of herbs and tonics. The Egyptians would fumigate uh, male genitalia with certain mixtures and like smokes in order to reduce the likelihood of people getting pregnant. Uh, seed pods, grass plugs, empty pomegranate halves were shoved up into the vaginal canal to block sperm from getting up into um, fertilize the egg. And then uh, early condoms were made out of sheep intestines. So we've come a long way since those things of, uh, you know, using kind of very primitive methods, but people have been using some kind of birth control for a very, very long time. Um, and the natural methods are really common, which we'll talk about as well. In the United States, uh, birth control has been really, really uh, just kind of controversial since the beginning. Right? We had a lot of people who were trying to further the availability of birth control. And for every person doing that, there was somebody fighting it. So Anthony Comstock in the like, 1870s into the 1900s was probably the most like avid fighter uh, against birth control methods. So whenever birth control methods came out, he said that they were immoral, that they were um, encouraging people to have sex. Still an argument that people use today to fight against like sex education. Uh, but the Comstock laws were things that were trying to prevent birth control methods from being available. These two women, Margaret Sanger and Catherine McCormick, were two people who were like instrumental in trying to bring birth control methods to women in the United States, literally smuggling things in through the mail, distributing pamphlets illegally, both of them arrested multiple times for their efforts, uh, kind of pioneers right in this uh, in this realm we're really trying to make it available for women so that they have better rights and choices yeah sure um, <laughs> well now you have to but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, i thought it was what you were talking about but i was doing a presentation on margaret singer yeah and i was like she's so awesome like i have to decorate my new room like i want to put a picture of her and like girl queen put her up in my room and then i continued reading like articles and she was like she was later, like, um, I can't think of words because it's the morning, but like seen worse in the public eye for her really like extreme credited racism. And I was like, oh, never mind. Oh, no. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't know anything about that side. Yeah. That's ooh, OK. Yeah. yeah and um, hard to say. And it was obviously also a very racist time period. Right. Uh, it, you know, if we're looking at like the early 1900s and mid 1900s. Yeah. And I don't know much about that. I know she was amazing when it came to this. Disappointing if we add that layer, right? <laughs> For sure. Um, uh, again, a lot of like back and forth, right? And a lot of like court rulings against different states. It was like maybe, it wasn't that many years ago, Colorado was voting to try and uh, make birth control methods like anti-constitutional, saying that like you were trying to prevent um, God's plan for the family. A lot of stuff this year related to reproductive rights, abortion, um, and things along those lines, which we'll talk about at the end of this chapter. You know, this is something that continues to be controversial even today, right? The idea of people having the availability of like blocking, you know, getting pregnant, but on a broader spectrum, we're talking about not only getting avoiding getting pregnant, but also avoiding getting STIs. So there's kind of multiple layers to the idea of contraceptives and birth control. Uh, today, right, as I said, it's still remaining pretty controversial. 
a lot of increase, right? 60% of people use some kind of uh, contraceptive method today compared to only about 10% in the 1960s. So, and much more available, much more friendly methods, much more effective methods, which we'll talk about. Uh, desirable for a lot of reasons, right? Being able to enjoy intimacy without acquiring an STD or an STI. Uh, without getting pregnant, right? So being able to reduce abortions and unwanted pregnancies. A lot of people talk about using birth control methods to alleviate and reduce um, issues related to overpopulation. Expanding women's access to higher levels of education and economic opportunity. That's what Singer and McCormick were really fighting for, giving women the opportunity to not be tied down to a family if they weren't ready, right? To be able to go to school and to have those opportunities. Uh, a lot of opposition from religious groups, right? Traditionally, religion um, and birth control methods have very much been like on opposite ends of the spectrum, uh, fighting the idea, right? So calling it a blasphemous mockery of, of God's plan for the family, right? As a kind of the popular far-right Christian perspective on birth control. So uh, again, remaining very, very controversial today, despite the fact that it's used by an incredible amount of people. A lot of people use some type of birth control method, or maybe even two. They're pretty common to combine them together. So when we're talking about choosing a birth control method, this really should be something that people who are engaging in any kind of sexual activity together, whether it's like a casual encounter or a relationship or whatever it might be, this should be something that you have a conversation about before you're in the heat of the moment. It's not really the time to do it, right? Um, and I have a great clip of that. Um, if you've seen the movie Knocked Up, there's a, a great miscommunication scene in the beginning where like they're about to have sex with each other. They're both drunk and trying to have a conversation about whether or not they should use a condom and doesn't go so well for them. Uh, well, I'll play that for you. So definitely something you should have a conversation about before you're engaging in any kind of intimacy. Uh, just something that should be talked about, obviously, before that moment, right? Ideally, right, you have a conversation, reading and discussing options together, right? And so in a heterosexual relationship, it's very common that maybe uh, like the woman is on something like um, the pill, right, or something like that, or using like um, a ring or some kind of a method. And then oftentimes a man will use a condom. So you're combining methods together, making them more effective for the most part. But these should be things that you talk about and discuss together. Obviously, that makes it a little more complicated if it's more of like a, a casual like encounter rather than a relationship. But still, right? And sometimes couples will like attend a class or go to the doctor together to do these things like to get them started, um, going to the doctor to get um, like an IUD put in, for example, or a ring put in um, to help, right? Or get prescribed medication, sharing expenses, right? Sometimes uh, uh, you know, these methods can be expensive, right? Some of you went condom shopping. Condoms aren't the cheapest thing. They're not the worst, but they're not the cheapest either. As a side note, you can get free condoms from our health center. Uh, you have to like say hi to them. You can't just like try and sneak in and grab them because they have a mirror, so they'll see you. Uh, but they do have them and you can get them for free. Um, they give them out all the time. Uh, but these should be things that you, again, talk about and kind of are educated about before that moment comes. Uh, it's also important when you're choosing a birth control method, I have this quote up here at the top, right? It's important to remember that there is currently not an ideal method, one that is 100% effective, completely safe, with no side effects, reversible, separate from sexual activity, inexpensive, easy to obtain, usable by either sex, and not dependent on the user's memory. So other than abstinence, right, not having any kind of sexual, like, activity with anybody, right, there isn't an ideal perfect method. Every method has failure rates to it and um, issues with it, right, so there are advantages and disadvantages to every method, which we'll look at a little bit more later. So when you're considering methods, you want to consider the effectiveness and the cost, right? Everyone has, again, what um, is called a failure rate. If used properly, how many times out of 100 it will fail, right? And, or how many times it will be successful. You can look at it either way. And so considering that and the cost, right? Some procedures are more permanent than others, right? Some are more expensive than others. Some methods are, are cheaper and some are more expensive. Well, how easy is it to use? What are the side effects? Some of the methods have hormones, which can cause side effects. 
um, or maybe require a doctor's visit or a procedure. There's also a lot of ineffective use. The number one reason that birth control methods fail is human error, right? Not using them correctly. There are like seven steps to using a condom, right? The first one being that you have to check that there's an air bubble, right, in the condom, right? I went like this. You have to check the little condom, right? That's to make sure it has an air bubble. If they don't, somebody could have easily taken a pin and popped a little hole in the condom and you might not ever know, right? So checking it, checking the expiration date, right? There's like seven different steps, right? And oftentimes, again, in the heat of the moment, people not necessarily doing all those. Using an expired condom reduces its... Uh, efficiency. It increases its failure rate significantly. So checking the expiration dates. People like to keep them in their wallet, but then you sit on your wallet and you could very easily pop that little bubble um, in the packaging, which makes them less effective. So um, little things like that are things that you have to consider. It's also really important to know yourself. Like if you're the kind of person who isn't great with remembering to take a pill every day, birth control pills aren't the best for you. They're only effective if you take them every day at roughly the same time. So if you're somebody who's not so good at that, birth control pills probably aren't the best for you. If you're not uh, comfortable touching yourself and inserting like a nuva ring up into the vaginal canal, then that's probably not the best method for you, right? So knowing yourself and what you're comfortable with, how good are you um, with keeping track of time and remembering to take a pill, these are all things that you might wanna consider and again, a lot of couples do use backup methods, combining more than one thing together to make them more effective. And I have one more clip um, related to human error, um, again, from a comedy. So many great like romantic comedies that show these moments. Uh, but 40-year-old virgin shows a great scene of like condom failure because um, he doesn't know how to use it. Uh, and that is obviously going to make it less effective. When we have uh, the health center is going to come in in like a, a week or two, a couple of weeks, and they're going to talk about STIs. Sometimes they do demonstrations with condoms. They used to do one, which was really entertaining. They'd have people come up and try and put a condom on and, and to simulate that they were drunk on, on like a, on a little like device, not on themselves, right? That, um, you know, inappropriate. Uh, but they would put like uh, baking mitts on them, you know, like the oven mitts. And so to simulate being drunk that you didn't have the dexterity to open it like you would if you were like under full capacity, very fun to do. I wonder if they'll still do it. It was always very, very entertaining to, to watch. All right, um, so what I wanna do from here is there are quite a few different methods, right, that are available. And rather than me lecturing about all of them, I thought it might be fun to do something a little different. So uh, I have a box here filled with uh, kind of some of these more common methods. So what I'm going to have you all do is I'm going to have you get into groups of like two to three people, okay? And what you'll do when you're ready is you'll send one person up from your group to grab one of these items. Now, I would like to just remind you, these are all demonstration items. Please don't be like, oh, look, birth control pills, those will work. They will not. They are very old. And like every year, one or two of them goes missing and it scares me to think what happened to them. So please, these are all old items. You do not want to use these. But they're great for what we're doing. So um, I have in here, I have a little um, like IUD. It's not this whole thing. It's just this tiny little thing at the top, but it includes the applicator. Uh, a Nuva ring, a female condom, a diaphragm, plan B, the pill. Again, not worth taking, <laughs> but a uh, vaginal contraceptive foam, the patch, a dental band, and a male condom, okay? So um, I have a variety of items. So what I'd like you to do is when you're ready and you have like two to three people, whatever's convenient, I'm gonna have you come up and you're gonna grab one item and one of these sheets, okay? So you're gonna write all of your names on your sheet. And then as a group, what I want you to do is you're gonna take a little bit of time using your phones or technology, whatever you have available to you. I want you to look up your item and find out a couple of things about it. Just jot them down, you can put them right on here um, and then just turn the sheet in. But what is your item? How do you use it? Give me a little bit of an overview. Uh, tell me some of the benefits and dangers, like the positives and negatives of your item. You could look up the failure rate of that item. How effective is it, right? How well does it work? What are some of the, um, the pitfalls of it? And then any other relevant or interesting information that you find out, like how much does it cost? Where can you get it? 
any random little bits of information that you want to share. So I'll give you some time as a group to research this. And then I'm just going to have you from your seat, whoever wants to do it, you can split it up in your group or one person can do it. It's up to you. Uh, but you'll share that information with the class. We'll go through and share that really quickly. Uh, and then we'll move on. Right. No. So uh, when you're ready, go ahead and send one person up to grab a sheet and an item. Uh, and then while you're working, I'll put on some like Halloween music and I'll pass around candy. So that'll make it kind of fun, I think. Uh, but when you're ready, come up and grab an item, two to three people in your group. And then go ahead and get started. Nice. <laughs> oh, no, here's a group. Yeah. Got ring, female pond, and male pond. There you go. That's the first control. The copper one? Yes. That's the tiny little thing up at the top. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, it has the whole applicator in there, too. Did everybody get an item? There's still a couple items up here left. If you. So, again, feel free to use the Look at these items. Perfect. Right. 